so I move out to Silicon Valley or San Francisco when finally it's starting to see negative population pressures and everybody smart is moving in the opposite direction. What role does artificial intelligence play in how you think about your investment process and how you think about these bots? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I do kind of want to stress that we, we are a discretionary strategy. Um, so our decisions are always made um, at, at, at the discretionary level. But, we, you know, we, and, and our process has remained remarkably similar um, through the last 20 plus years. However, you know, the, the, the key to, to a successful investment process in my mind is to be disciplined but adaptable. And I think what we're talking about with, when we're looking at, at the bots is just a, uh, a way to try to be a little bit more adaptable to the marketplace. It's to be adaptable to the standpoint of, if you go back um, in, 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 in the previous career we had, maybe call it five or 10 years ago, we might have had, um, we, we, we would have had people and teams in all of those different seats telling us what was going on in the market, what they were seeing in the market. Um, without being afforded that luxury because teams, you have to do more with technology because you don't have as many people to, to do that with. And so we've kind of built the, the bots to initially, at the first step, replicate what people were doing before, not from an investment standpoint, but from an information standpoint. Um, when you talk about AI, and again, I don't think we're going to be at the, at the forefront of that per se from in our mind, but um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, et cetera, clearly where the market's moving towards. Um, I don't think it'll be there next year. I think it will be there in the next 10 years, but it's, it's just a, it's another tool in the toolkit that help you make your, your process more adaptable to what it's seen in the marketplace, all within the framework of a, you know, the same sort of discipline framework of how you want to parse the data. It's about the, it's, to me, it's more about how you access the data than it is how you um, interpret the data once you have it. So your clarification on that as a discretionary strategy is, is important to me because you and I have talked about this repeatedly, but you know, the way I think about quantitative strategies is that they're inherently short volatility. Mm -hmm. right? No matter how you structure it in one form or another, you are saying the world in the future is going to look very closely like it did in the past. And therefore these price patterns repeat or these signals that we're receiving are somewhat immutable. Um, but you're using it very differently. You're actually saying this is an information set and then I need to be able to construct a thesis and a, and, and a theoretical underpinning behind what I'm, I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. Do you ever allow, do you ever find that the bots totally flip your perspective? I don't find that they flipped a perspective, but I find that it's, it's really not that different than when you have a conversation with smart people around the room and you, you're challenged, your perspective might be challenged. And then to me, the onus is on you to debate your viewpoint. And if you find that you're lacking in the course of that debate, you might want to go back and rethink it. Um, if you feel like you're kind of winning that debate, if you will, um, you maybe feel a little bit more confidence that, hey, you know what, I, I was tested in my thesis and, and I kind of came out positively on the other end. So I, I you know, absolutely find that um, so, we, you know, we'll test how we think about the world or how we're starting to think about the world. I mean, you know, a perfect example right now, you know, we're a little bit more positively predisposed towards, you know, towards growth, towards inflation, towards you know, nominal growth and what that means for um, securities prices. But the, the flows right now or the data right now is telling us that the market is seeing things very differently than us. So that could be a potential opportunity or we could be completely wrong. I think, you know, we, we have, we'll have, we'll have uh, road marks that we want to look for to, to know when we want to maybe change our strategy. But for, for, you know, for now, you have to respect the, the information you're getting. And, and that, that's where kind of um, risk management, right, is, is, or asset management is a combination of dogmatism and pragmatism. And you have, you know, the, the, be the best of asset managers are those that know, know when it's time to be one or the other. Um, and for us right now, um, you know, we think it's time to be pragmatic and not dogmatic. There might be a time when we're, when the data that we, the other data that we look at is overwhelmingly positive, or that you get to a level in terms of valuation, price, et cetera, where, you, where the risk reward suggests you're being paid to take the bet, um, that, you know, you, it would be a little bit more dogmatic. That doesn't feel like that's the time right now. You mentioned your bots. One of the things that you highlight is, is that you have um, value bots, effectively. There's a value factor, right? Yeah. And it's just not working. Any, any, any thoughts on that? Well, it's particularly now, it's, it's not working for us, but it's particularly not working. I think one of the problems with, with 
with, and I would love to know kind of what you, what you look at. You have a, a you know, more uh, robust value background than I do. But you know, um, you know, one of the things I see in, in sort of the market levels of value or market levels of growth, one of the problems is there's an inherent capitalization or sector bias in a lot of those indices. And so you know, value not working in, in, in maybe you know, the, the Dow Jones measure might just mean that energy or financials weren't working. Um, so, so what we do is we, we, we factor, we, t we take out the, the capitalization bias, we take out the sector, sector bias. And so it's a, it's a sector neutral, market neutral, size neutral um, look at you know, L1, you know, the, the S&P GIX all the way down to L4 and say, okay, within each one of those industries, is it working? Uh, and so we can get a, a little bit more, so we can, we can add it up, aggregate it to the top level, but then say, okay, if it is working or isn't working, where is it or is it not working? And, and, and what's the hit rate across the, the different industries? And so it's a, it's a little bit more, I think, um, for us, um, robust factor in the sense that it's telling you truly what you're, what you're looking for. So when you make that uh, modification, and again, at SPXL1 through L4 are just different levels of, of specific, yeah. specificity in terms of the sectors. So L1 would be information technology, for example, and L4 would be, you know, uh, internet software. Correct. Right? Okay. Um, do you see the factors working better within those subsets? Is this a is this a sector or industry driven phenomenon? As you yeah. highlight, as possible, or they're working slightly better, but it's still it's still not in aggregate. It's still not working. It's working in some places, um, but but the reason I bring it up is like you know we all get all the the information and email from the street, et cetera, and not to, to pick on them, but you know when when a lot of times you'll get the, well, growth is crushing value, et cetera, et cetera. But if you, when you kind of look down to how those measures tend to be constructed, it tends to be, that just is another way of saying tech is working and energy is not working. And so for us, that that's interesting. It's interesting, why not just say tech's working and energy is not working and, and how you know, sustainable is that? Whereas we say, okay, well, you know, people would say writ large value is not working. Well, if I were a healthcare, Long short PM value is working actually quite quite nicely right now, even down at the L3 level. So you know there's one place where it is working. The across the the 11 um, you know L1 S&P GIX, it's not working you know in aggregate. But there are there are one or two places where where it, it is it is working. Is is that early signs that it might creep in, or is that just kind of it, it's not a strong enough. Um, it's not a strong enough factor for us to want to be interested in it. But it, it is probably a little bit more informative that if you if you were concerned with um, if you if you were to go in the healthcare sector right now, it might be you you might not want to ignore that factor at least. Mm -hmm.